morning, Algebra 1. This is our last lesson. So I'm going to be covering, can you take notes? Algebra 1. So this is section 9.5, solving quadratic equations, which is what we've been doing for several sections. But we're going to learn a new way to do it today. So solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. It's probably one of the most used math formulas in my math classes. So you should put your name, date, period on your notes. Okay, so what is the quadratic? Well, to use a quadratic formula, we're going to use it on quadratic equations. But the quadratic equation needs to be in standard form. Okay, and this is something we've been dealing with before. Standard form would be this AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So that's standard form. Um, if it's in standard form, uh, we can use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula looks like this. X, which is the solution, the answer, the root, the x-intercept, equals negative b, the opposite of b, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, there's a couple of restrictions. We'll talk about it later a little bit, but... Uh, you cannot do it when a equals zero, which by the way, if a equals zero, that term would be gone. And it's not a quadratic equation anymore. Plus you get division by zero. Also b squared minus four ac, this stuff inside here has to be positive or equal to zero. We'll talk about that more later. So that is our quadratic formula. <clears throat> And um, so let's now the way they came up with this formula was actually by using completing the square on this generic standard form equation. And this is what they get. So we did completing the square before. Um, I'm not going to show you that. It's a bit complicated. So this is kind of more of a memorized formula that, that works good. And if you can't factor, this works uh, for ugly answers. But um, so. We're going to go ahead and solve the quadratic equation uh, by using the quadratic formula. So example one, uh, 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. So that's a quadratic equation. It's in standard form already, which is what we need. It's already in standard form, right? Okay, good. We're good to go. I would write the values down. A equals 2 b equals negative 5. If it's minus, that negative belongs to the 5. Plus 3, that's the c value, that's the constant. So I'd write those down. And it might be a good idea to help you start to memorize this, because you'll probably be expecting to memorize this, you know, to write the formula down. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. One, that's going to help you remember it by writing it down, trying to write it down from memory. It's also going to help you plug things into the right spot. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these things into the right spots. I'm going to put them, everything I plug in, I'm going to put in parentheses. So it's going to be negative parentheses negative 5, plus or minus. That means there's two answers, which we often get two answers for solutions to quadratic equations, right? Negative 5 in parentheses squared minus 4a in parentheses 2, 
c is 3 in parentheses. All divided by 2 times a, a lot of times people just forget the denominator. It's a fraction, there's a denominator, it's division. So now we've got to use order of operations, okay? Uh, we got to do parentheses. There's not really parentheses. Uh, well, you got to do everything inside the square root before you do the square root. Um, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So I'm going to do this. This is like negative, negative. Minus, minus is plus, plus. Or negative 1 times negative 5 is positive. Plus or minus. Negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. All divided by 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm just slowly making this simpler. So order of operation says we got to do parentheses, which is also what's inside of square root. 25 minus 24 is 1. Okay? Now from here, we're going to get two answers. We're going to get 5 plus the square root of 1 is 1 over 4. And we're going to get 5 minus the square root of 1 is 1 over 4. So we're going to get two answers. 6 over 4, this is going to be 4 over 4. Uh, this is going to end up being 3 halves or 1 and a half or 1.5. Any of those answers would probably be fine. This is just going to be 1. So those are your two answers. Those are your two solutions to that quadratic equation. Let's do another one. And we'll introduce a little extra challenge here. So example two, uh, the quadratic equation is going to be 4x squared minus 4x equals negative 1. And the challenge here is that it is not in standard form yet. Right? It's not in standard form. So we need to get it in standard form. So we need to move everything to this side. Make this a 0, right? And then when we rewrite it, put it in order. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. You cannot combine these. They're not like terms. Equals 0. You need the equals. need the 0. So now it's in standard form. Now we can write the letters down. A equals 4. B equals negative 4. C equals 1. Okay? You can write the formula down. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. You're going to you're going to use this formula in most future math classes. Okay, so let's plug the values in negative parentheses negative 4. So be careful, there's a negative there and then there's another negative. That's why I always put everything in parentheses. Negative 4 in parentheses squared minus 4 times a is 4, c is 1. Divided by 2 times a. Okay. So x equals negative negatives, positive 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Minus 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8. Then 16 minus 16 is 0. Now here's the deal. This one's kind of a funny one because we're going to get two answers. 4 plus the square root of 0 is 0 divided by 8 gives you 4 over 8 gives you 1 half, 4.5, either one. The other answer is going to be 4 minus 0 over 8 which is also going to give you 4 over 8, which is going to give you the same answer. We don't need to write the same answer twice. So this one's kind of weird. It gave you the same answer twice. And we've seen this before with other ones. Now, that's going to lead us to our next thing. There's actually a strong hint that will tell you how many answers you're going to get. Usually we get two, but sometimes we get one, and sometimes we get none. And it's this number in here, this number inside the square root, the radical, we call that a radical, that tells you how many answers you're going to get. Very simply. Okay? The number doesn't tell you how many answers, but it, it's not zero answers. It's not one answer. It's But there's something about it. 
how many answers you will get. So I'm gonna we're gonna talk about that in a little more detail now. Okay. So that we write our quadratic format x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now this thing inside, that's called, it has a special name, it's called the discriminant. To discriminate is to look at things differently, to tell how things are different apart. It's just the b squared minus 4ac. It does not include the square root. Okay, so that's called the discriminant. Now, we'll go through the th three scenarios and I'll even draw pictures. If the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is positive, what the graph would look like, these graphs of quadratic equations are parabolas, which we spend a lot of time graphing. And a simple example of a parabola that gets an, a positive discriminant is it's going to have two x-intercepts, okay? So it has two x-intercepts on the graph. And when, when we, this would be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When we set y equal to zero, then that finds the x-intercepts. So that's why we know it's gonna give us two x-intercepts. It's also gonna give us two real solutions, two real solutions, okay? If b squared minus four ac equals zero, well, that's kind of a special case. Most parabolas have two x-intercepts and most parabolas and quadratic equations have two solutions. But sometimes you have a parabola that barely touches the x-axis and it only has one x-intercept. So that's always gonna happen if the discriminant equals zero. You get one x-intercept, which also means you get one real solution. The third scenario is that b squared minus four ac turns out to be negative. And if that happens, the picture of what's going on might look like this. It's a parabola that has that never crosses the x-axis. It has no x-intercepts, no x-intercepts, which also means it has no real solutions. So the number of solutions corresponds to one of these pictures. So we could kind of uh, we could kind of summarize this. Uh, if the discriminant, we could write up here, is positive, you're going to get two real solutions. If it is zero, you're going to get one real solution. And if it's negative, you're going to get no solutions, no real solutions. So that's sort of a little summary, but that goes with these pictures. Now, the cool thing about these problems is that when they ask you to do them, it's actually less work than the other ones we were doing. So the directions for these problems might look like this. So let's see, we'll say example three. The directions might say determine the number of real solutions. They're not telling you to find the solutions. They're just saying, how many are there going to be? So here's the first example. x squared plus 8x minus 3 equals 0. It's in standard form. We're going to write our a value. a equals 1. b equals 8. c equals negative 3. If there's no number in front, that's a 1. Okay, we're going to plug it into the discriminant, which is just b squared minus 4ac. This is just part of the quadratic formula. It's the only part we need right now. So if we plug that in, we get 8 squared minus 
times a is 1 times c is negative 3. So it's going to be 64. Order of operations, you got to do parentheses exponents first, then multiplication. 4 times, you have a negative times a negative, so that's going to be positive 12. So we're going to get 76. Now 76 is positive, right? So you're going to get two solutions. And that's your final answer. I mean, you could go ahead and find the solutions and be able to tell me there's two solutions, but that's a lot of extra work. Let's do one more like this. 9x squared plus 1 equals 6x. Now the problem here, it's not in standard form yet, so we need to move this over here. Got to get rid of it. When you rewrite it, you want to do it in standard form. The x squareds first, then the x's, then the non-x's. Okay, put it in standard form. A equals 9, C equals negative 6, I'm sorry, B equals negative 6, C equals 1. We're going to plug it into B squared minus 4AC. It's good to just write it down to get it better in your memory, and then it's also good because it's easier to make sure you plug everything in the right spots. I always plug everything in parentheses. That's a general thing I do in any math, anytime plugging values in. That's called substitution. I, I, I find it helpful to not make extra mistakes when I do it like that. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. Minus 4 times 9 is 36 times 1 is 36. We get 0. Right? And 0 means 1 solution. And 0, we did this problem on the front. That's what happened. That's what happened on example two. We got a zero in there, and it turned out that we got the same answer twice, so we really just got one answer. All right, so we've already seen it happen. That's what's happening. Every time you get a zero inside that square root, that's what's going to happen. All right, one more quick example that's going to be almost the same work. But the, the directions are a little different. This is find the number of x intercepts of the graph and they're going to give you an equation y equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 9. Now one of the big differences here is that it's not equal to 0. It has a y because it's the actual graph of the parabola but to find the x-intercepts you're going to set it equal to 0. And then if we just want to find the number of x-intercepts, that's going to be the same as the number of solutions. So we write down a value, a equals 2, b equals 3, c equals 9, and we plug it into the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So we get 3 squared minus 4 times a is 2, C is 9, and we get 9 minus, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 9 is 72, 9 minus 72 is negative 63, and that's the big thing that we need to know is that it's negative. If it's negative, two things happen. If we were doing one of the previous problems, we'd say no real solution. Okay, as far as x-intercepts, it means that there are no x-intercepts. So it depends on what they're asking for. I mean, it's the same work. It's pretty much the same thing, but it, it kind of does change the way you answer it. So that is our notes. Uh, we're going to do monitoring progress. And that's going to start on page 516, problems 1 through 16 all. They're at the bottoms of the pages in the textbook, if you use the student, student dynamic textbook, there's little blue arrows that you can press play on. I think you got to be zoomed all the way out, and it shows you exactly how to do every problem. And then you'll know if you're actually getting it or not before you try and do the assignment or the quiz and waste time. or you know. And if you know how to do it, it's going to make those things faster. You can get better scores. All right, try it on your own.